Alright, so first, let's start off with who is my guy? I mean, whose man is this? Seriously, look at that mustache. It reminds me of my uncle from Pakistan or India. He really do be representing us Asians, man. The doctor is a villain who is also the personal physician of All for One. I mean, look at that sexy ass plastic surgery he gave to my guy. He can get any girl in the world, right? The doctor's villain name is Ojiko Daruma. Yeah, I'm gonna butcher his name throughout the video. But essentially, he is the same doctor we see in chapter 1 telling Deku that he is quirkless. His name is Dr. Subasa, according to the character book. He is the chairman of the hospital and owns different buildings of this manor. He is also said to be the grandfather to the winged guy playing with Bakugo as a kid when they were bullies. But not only this, it is heavily implied that the winged Nomu we see in the stain arc is this winged kid. This dude turned his own grandson into a nomu what is wrong with the parents in this anime first shigaraki and then this this is fucked this is not right this is not cool moving on we later find out in chapter 221 that he is the personal physician of all for one as i said and he is the reason for shigaraki's hands all over his body as he zombified them for him furthermore when the doctor meets shigaraki he does not believe that he is worthy of succeeding all for one shigaraki then proceeds to defeat the meta liberation army and and gets Gigan to Markia to submit. Oh my god, I got that right first time, guys. That is jaw dropping. Oh my god, that is a first time for me. Anyway, Shigaraki doing so awakens his decay quirk and now is deemed worthy of the doctor's help. So the doctor asks him if he is willing to go through four months of pain, suffering, and torture to further enhance himself, which could make him even stronger than All for One himself, to which Shigaraki agrees reluctantly. The doctor offered this operation and supposed quirk to All for One, but he refused it as he said it did not work according to his needs. This tells us that the doctor had a lot of pride in his abilities and puts a big value on himself. This is likely the case because we see in chapter 246 that before becoming a villain he had a theory regarding quirks. Now it seems as though all of these villains out here have a case of big brain syndrome. Yeah this big brain time. The doctor stated that in time, people will reach quirk singularity, meaning that the intermixing of quirks will one day lead to quirks becoming too powerful for the body to handle all of this, thus causing the end of humanity itself. He says this is because the body physically would not be able to keep up with the increased evolution of quirks as the generations go by so quickly. No one believes him on this theory as he does not have balls deep prediction quirk of course, but then all for one comes in, uses his manipulative genius to sway him towards him and the dark side as he says yeah fam you're right about the quirk theory of course this shows us that his ideology could be quite noble as he isn't fighting for chaos or doing evil just for the sake of being evil but for a cause he believes in that will save humanity from the quirk singularity for this reason to save humanity he creates the nomus who have the ability to withstand various strong quirks at once now let's talk about the nomus and how they were created the doctor gets the subjects needed to create the nomus through the orphanages and private hospitals he owns throughout Japan. The reason for orphanages and hospitals being the go-to for nomu subjects and not random guys from the streets is because of his singularity theory. According to the doctor, every new generation of quirk is stronger than the last. For example, Todoroki's quirk or Eri's, right? Because of this, the best subjects for becoming nomu are children as they have stronger quirks than an adult due to the generation gap. And where do you find children exactly that no one cares about or knows them in an orphanage right so the doctor basically gets kids from orphanages or hospitals who are deemed to have strong quirks and then turns them into nomus or takes their dna and injects them into a person whom he is likely to become a nomu or he will steal their quirk this injection of dna causes the person to change form and inherit all the traits present in the mixture this is why most nomus look so inhumane and like intelligence and not more advanced advanced in taking and acting out simple commands, right? The Nomus can't just be created with the Doctor, but require All For One's quirk extracting abilities for them to receive their quirk. By the way guys, if you got to this point of the video, please smash that like button and the notification bell because we cover My Hero Academia on a weekly basis, join the Anime Bulls Deep community, follow us on social media, I love you guys and appreciate how much you changed my life. Now what's interesting is that the name Nomu means no brain or brainless, which makes sense. All they can do is obey the order that they have been given by the people that have created them. Aizawa tried to get his friend back in the
the recent chapters by deleting the quirk of a newly discovered Nomu called Agiri, who was created from a former friend's corpse. It did not work due to how powerful the procedure is. Each Nomu is not the same power level. There are three types of Nomus. Low end Nomus are the ones we see running around like fodder and causing a nuisance to the low tier pro heroes. They are light in color and possess a variety of quirks including enhanced physical strength. For example at Kamino to assist Tomura Shogaraki. Mid end Nomus, those are the Nomus we see in the USJ arc and the ones who have more defined quirks and traits. These Nomus are black in color and possess super regeneration like the one from the USJ arc. They were able to overpower 100% all for one. These Nomus can even take on pro heroes as they are quite durable with enhanced strength. However, when we move on to the high end Nomu, they are intelligent Nomu that are completely outclass all the others. They have the abilities that even overpower pro heroes and can kill them quite easily. They have over six different quirks inside them fam. These are part of the same Nomu class that gave Endeavor his scar and pushed him to his absolute limits. Endeavor said the high end Nomu would have given all my a run for his money in his latest stage of his career. Endeavor is the freaking number one hero of society and he almost died against only one of these dudes but not only that the high end Nomus can actually talk and have a personality which absolutely shocked Endeavor as to how is this even happening fam. The abilities we have been shown so far that the high end Nomu have are like shoulder mounted jets which gives it speed boosted flight, power and transforming arms, storage which lets him store other creatures Nomus inside its body and release it at once, super regeneration and muscle augmentation and yes this is the same muscle augmentation as the villain muscular from the forest training arc where Midoriya had to go 100% and to even stand a chance against him right. So the doctor likely went to Tartarus the prison where muscular was being held after being captured during the forest arc and most likely stole or copied muscular's muscle augmentation quirk in order to beef up the high end Nomu. Lastly we just found out in the manga that there is a special type of Nomu. This Nomu is known as Kuragiri and it's a corpse Nomu created by doctor to aid and protect Shigaraki. The reason he is so special is because he seems to still have the memories and links to his past life so he is not no brainless and shit like that right. He's totally the opposite. He's extremely calm, collected about his actions and can think for himself unlike the others. But that's not the end of it. The doctor has also created a Nomu named Johnny. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny, yes, Papa. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. This last Nomu called Johnny has the warp quirk and lets the doctor teleport back and forth from his lab which adds an extra layer of security and mystery to the doctor. Johnny is basically the doctor's car. This dude is like the butter robot from Rick and Morty fam. Johnny is probably like what is my purpose and the doctor is like you are my car bitch. Johnny's quirk is also similar to the quirk used by all for one to warp during the Camino incident if you can see the similarities. The doctor also classifies Johnny as a high and Nomu and shows us about 10 other Nomus of the sort. Okay so now that we are all on the same page it's time for our deep theory regarding the doctor working with all for one and how the narrative will proceed. In My Hero Academia chapter 257 we clearly see the same doctor in the hospital being welcomed by staff seemingly unaware of his dark intentions as they say good morning doctor you're a rare sight. Now obviously he's a rare sight because the dude be secretly making Nomu in his laboratory we see in chapter 221. We then see the doctor being caught by Endeavor in the latest chapter 259 as it may be a trap or it may be that Hawks has got the right intel. We will find out in the future. But as we know so far the doctor only comes back to the hospital at this point to steal quirks from children for all for one. Working at the hospital gives him access to wounded and dying people where he takes them for his experiments. This is perfect for him as no one would presume something fishy was happening because of the injuries he can just declare their post-mortem to suit his needs. He's a respectable and older doctor right? Keep in mind this is the same doctor that told Deku when he was four years old that he has no quirk and that his x-ray displays no speciality so he is in the 20% of people with no ability. Now some of the My Hero Academia community have made a theory thinking that Deku had a 
quirk and it was stolen by the doctor. Deku's quirk could have been given to Shigaraki since he also had the same problem of not having a quirk as a child. This theory is backed up by the fact that All For One met Shigaraki when he was a young kid and dropped him off at his home just before supposedly when his quirk manifested and it ended up killing his whole family. If you want a detailed balls deep analysis on this whole backstory on why All For One did this, please check out the video being displayed to you from the pinned comment right now. However, in my opinion, I'm not sure if the theory of Deku's quirk being stolen to be given to Shigaraki makes sense in the timeline. This is because we know for a fact that Deku went to the doctor at age of 4. When we were given the backstory of Shigaraki, it was told to us that he was 5 years old in chapter 235. So this doesn't add up because Shigaraki is in fact 4 years older than Deku. If it was stated that Shigaraki was 8 years old in this backstory, then this theory would have a lot more strength to it. Now obviously you can argue the doctor could have faked the x-ray since he is so corrupt and he could have simply stolen Deku's original quirk if he had it. But I'm not sure about if Deku even had a quirk in the first place. Maybe he was telling the truth this time round. The poetic story that Horikoshi is exemplifying to us might be that Shigaraki and Deku who both idolized heroes and wanted to be like All Might actually took opposite paths due to their circumstances. My Hero Academia's fights are mostly about a clash of ideologies. Stain overhauled the doctor and ultimately Shigaraki all disagree with what society has become. Deku is a character that represents the quirkless, someone that is part of the 20% and his whole character embodies the fact that he did not have what everyone else possessed. Some fans can argue that if the narrative shows that he had a quirk all along and it was stolen, that it may take away from Deku's character and what he symbolizes to the hero world. For example, All Might was originally also a boy that was quirkless and got bestowed one for all, therefore could put himself in Deku's shoes, as it was one of the reasons he decided to choose him over Mirio, right? Deku being quirkless allowed him to gain the mentality that he has now to be the person that is hardworking and willing to sacrifice everything to save people. I mean, imagine if he had a quirk and kept it, that would mean he wouldn't have developed into the super nerd where he analyzes every quirk he sees in his notebook for future references to study. And then this would have led to him not being the type of person that could master all quirks in one for all with the talent that he developed because of his circumstances. Therefore, everything is connected to All Might and the ideologies of what makes hero society. This is literally, and I mean literally told to us in chapter 69 when Shigaraki and Deku have a conversation about Stain. They have a clash of ideals in which the characters admit their admiration for All Might and the reason Shigaraki is pissed off by Stain is because it's all connected to him. He hates all people and their smiles since heroes exist. He will always be angry because people believe heroes will always save them. Shigaraki is angry because heroes in fact did not save him when he was a child. He became homeless and scared. He was a starving little boy that lost everything but only all for one came to save his life. In chapter 246, Shigaraki states that he wants to destroy all the remnants of what All Might represented after he idolized him as a kid. He wants to tear everything apart and become the symbol of terror as he declared himself. Whilst Deku is the opposite, who wants to become the next symbol of peace, just like All Might and glue everything together. Therefore, in chapter 69, when Shigaraki leaves Deku, he says the next time that they meet, he will definitely kill Deku, as he represents All Might and what he hates about society. Horikoshi has stated that he wants My Hero Academia to explore on what makes a hero, and he believes all human beings are heroes in their own way with their story. Therefore, a quirkless boy like Deku represents how it's not the power you possess that makes someone great, but also their character that goes along with it. Do you have the correct ideology to actually save people for the right reasons? That's the question that anime is proposing. But let's say going with the doctor theory of quirk singularity or the first one for all user not even knowing that he had a quirk himself, Deku could have also suffered this problem too right? That is also possible. So in my opinion in the future if it is revealed that Deku did have a quirk and the doctor stole it, I, I wouldn't be entirely surprised or think it was bad writing since it has been established that it was indeed the same doctor from chapter 1 and it could be a fantastic plot twist that has been planned. However, I definitely don't think Deku's quirk was given to Shigaraki as he was already showing symptoms of illness with itching going all over before his quirk manifested.
listed and also the numbers don't match let me know in the comment section below if you think deku's quirk got stolen or not do you do you think it would be good for the story does it match the story would you like that but as i said i do believe that all for one planned for shigalaki to become his evil son and his successor to destroy the world make sure to watch that video in the pinned comment with that i'll see you guys next time